to you by Sherwin-Williams House Paint, the standard of quality throughout the world. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you, Arlene. And now the nationally syndicated newspaper columnist, my dear friend, always loved being in the column, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, the still undeclared candidate for mayor of New York, Mr. Bennett Sir. <laughs> Well, of all the panel moderators in television, John Charles Daly is invariably the most eupeptic. How come? We don't know. He must be doing something right. <laughs> Here's John Charles Daly. There's one thing about publishers of dictionaries. They have to read all those words. Do you, do you read copy on your American Collegiate Dictionary? Thing? I make up most of it. <laughs> you make up most of it. That could be, I think, possible. Paul Anka, it's very nice to see you on the panel. I must give you full and fair warning that the imagination has been fully exercised tonight, so brace yourselves for the next half hour. You're, you're going to have some uh, real tough ones thrown at you. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger after this. And now to meet our first challenger, would you enter and sign in, please? Pat? Pat McGee, right? Miss or Mrs. McGee? Miss. Miss McGee. It's nice to have you here, Miss McGee. I think the Dailies and the McGees are a good and, and a fine bit of opposition for the panel. Great. A good show. Miss McGee, may I present the panel? Thank you. And would you tell them where you're from? San Diego, California. San Diego, California. Now, if you'll join me over here, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Miss McGee is salaried and deals in a product. And we will begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Miss McGee, is this a product that is used out of doors? Yes. Is it a product that uh, I might enjoy? Oh, yes. Is there something entertaining about the product? If yes. you were using it, it sure would be. <laughs> Thank you, John. Um, is it a product that would uh, keep me in motion? Yes. Is it a product that has wheels? Yes. Is it a product that would get me around? Yes. Is it a product that would be ever on my feet? Yes. Oh. Is this this new skating. board, skating board, that you <laughs> fly around on all the time? That's, that's, that's remarkable, Arlene, and congratulations. But of course, we haven't as yet determined what Miss McGee has to do with the skateboard, have we? No, we haven't. Are you an instructress? Uh, no. She's a champ, I bet. Well, I actually... Demonstrate? Champ, demonstrate, instruct, all of these are right, so I'll throw all the cards over. I wish right. you were going to, have you got the skateboard with you? I'd love to see how it works. You no, didn't but bring if, it? You, if you look at the front 
cover of Life magazine this week, you will see Miss McGee on She's her on hands it? on a skateboard, oh, on right on the front cover. Oh, of John, if you'd only try one of those. <laughs> you think that was nice? I don't think that was nice. Huh? I think it would be fun. You, I think it would be, too, and I could do it. Now, he couldn't, but I could try it. We could always get him a chair, and he could sit on the edge of the sidewalk and watch while I was doing it. No, I guess actually Miss McGee, and I don't want to embarrass her, is probably the, the champ of all champs. She can do it standing on, you know, takes a little tiny skateboard, because they come in many sizes, and she stands on her hands and cruises around, and you, but you got this, acquired this skill first from, from uh, surfboarding. I have surfed for about seven years, yes. But... You, is this a preparation for, for skateboarding? Surfing? No, not necessarily. The skiers have picked it up, have adopted the skateboard also. Oh, it's more skiing with the propitious. Practice. They huh? use the skateboard for practice. Yeah. And it's a great transporter. Uh, it's Vita Pact Citrus Company makes the, the, the skateboards. Right, that's what in it? Covina, California. This, what did this del develop from the boxes that they pack oranges and things in? No. It's the citrus company threw me in. Right. Um, it's, they make the skateboards because they have the facilities. They just uh, went into another field. Yeah. And actually, uh, Miss Pat is down at Macy's. You know, we, we had you every way this way. You'd find it in the home. You'd find it outside. You could buy it at a department store. You could do all kinds of things with it. Can I ask Miss McGee a question? Do you have different sizes for men and women, or are they, they the same thing for all? Different sizes sometimes for the different tricks that you want to do with it, or different sizes for the size of person. And for Bennett Surf, they have a special model. It's the size of a freight car. We have one with an engine on it, too. That's the one for Bennett, the one that's the size of a freight car and has an engine on it. Dorothy says it's called a Rolls Royce. A Rolls Royce. Good show. Well, Miss McGee, I thought we were going to give them a lot of trouble. I'm sorry we didn't, but it certainly was a delight to have so pretty a young lady and so skillful a young lady on that panel. So, Bennett, you can get your Hobie skateboard at the nearest freight yard, okay? Mm -hmm. Now let's meet a second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Dick? How? Right, sir? <laughs> Mr. Hull, where are you from? Tomo, Iowa. A Tomo, Iowa. Iowa. What is it? Oh, yes. Now, that's near, uh, what other big city? Des Moines. Des Moines, near Des Moines. Fine. All right, Mr. Hull, may I introduce our panel? And now, if you'll come over here and sit down with me, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that Mr. Hull is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Hull, could I use your services if I were in the right place? Yes. Uh, do you think it would benefit me if I did? Yes. Yeah, if you required the service and you were in the right place, had an interest in receiving it, then certainly a benefit would uh, derive therefrom. Mm -hmm. uh, could a man enjoy your services too? Yes. Do you work indoors at no. all? Nope, that's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Now, let me stress here that in, in answering Dorothy's question, we are saying that under the given proper set of circumstances, a man or a woman wanting this particular service would benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hall, you know, Edna Ferber, one of the great American writers, comes from Ottumwa. Did you ever know her when she was no. living there? That's a no. That's too dark. Oh, come oh. on, <laughs> I, I want to ask Mr. Hull if uh, uh, his work is connected in any way with any form of sport or athletics. No. Oh, two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Do people come to you for this service, Mr. Hull? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Anker. Could I use your service at any time? Yes. Now, this again presumes, Paul, that this, the circumstances are such that you would require this service. 
Uh, if this were true, then you could get in touch with Mr. Hall and the service could be given to you and you could use it. Uh, in calling you, would you not only have something to do with me, but maybe something that I am having a problem with? Yes. So in other words, it, it may not be a defect in myself as opposed to maybe a piece of machinery or a household appliance. Mm -hmm. Would you come to me at any hour? Yes. He he, would. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure Mr. Hull would be glad to. I don't think he would be particularly pleased with performing the service at midnight or two o'clock in the morning, would you? I have. You have? He has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By looking at me now, do I need your service? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. <laughs> no. I think we would... Mr. Hull, I think we've got to say no to that. That's four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Hull, uh, is it possible that because of the nature of your work, the discretion as to whether you call upon a person in the daytime or in the middle of the night is up to you rather than to the person involved? No, no, that's five down and five to go, Mr. Serf. Mr. Hull, does your service involve in any way animals, birds, or fish? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Is there anything difficult about your job beyond the difficulty all of us find in our work? No. No? It isn't a serious and, and dangerous job in any way? Well, I would say with Mr. Hull's permission, I think in the context of the question is, as it's asked, uh, it is a service which we would not reasonably expect the average person to be able to deliver. Would you agree with that, Mr. Hull? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you'd, you'd have to have certain definite kinds of knowledge certain definite kinds of experience, and uh, I guess a love of your work. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hull does this service out of doors, does he? Mm -hmm. Do you work for a non-profit making organization? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. That's seven down and three to go, Mr. Anchor. Mr. Hull, do you use tools as opposed to your hands in doing this? Yes. Do you work alone rather than with maybe a few other people? No. That's eight down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then, Mr. Hull, you do work with other people. Yes. But when you go out on an assignment, uh, are you ever accompanied by any of these people? Yes. Do you go out in a motorized vehicle? Yes. Uh, do you, when you get to the place, well, I think we've established that you help people or help them in some situation. Well, he performs a service mm. that, they, that they have a wish for. That's basically it. Though. I see. Well, if it's a, a wish in the middle of the night, it is, uh, I would say it is not a particularly whimsical wish. I wouldn't uh, put too much weight on the middle of the night. You wouldn't. <laughs> right. I mean, somebody wakes up in the middle of the night, he doesn't, you know, ask for some guy to... I couldn't agree with you more. Actually, I'd get mad myself, but Mr. Hull is a much more placid man than I am. Uh, may I assume uh, that you are not a doctor, sir? Yes. Uh, may I assume that when you go to people, you are not there for the purpose of rescuing them in any legal sense? Yes. Uh, when you go to them, do you go inside their houses ever? No. That's nine down and one to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Hull, do you do anything to change the appearance of either a house or some part of the property outside? Yes. Uh, is it the house that you do something to? No. No, uh, no that's ten down and no more to go. This is a really tough one because actually Mr. Hull operates an auto-crushing machine for scrap metal. Oh. oh We got a fellow in, in Goldfinger. There's a fellow in Goldfinger. Yeah, you know, actually, that, that is evidently where we, we thought some of you might get into that area. How is that it, scene in Goldfinger accurate? No, this is a portable crusher. Actually, he works for an outfit called the Alter Company, but he operates a portable crushing machine that is carried on a truck. It's what, made by the Aljon Al 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 Company in his hometown in Otumba. And he'll come to, you know, a, a, a car 
junkyard or whatever it is, and then he sets up the machine and feeds the cars into the machine, and they come out 17, 18, whatever the length of the car, 17, 18 feet long and about six inches high. That, but you burn the bodies out first. That's what right? happens in Goldfinger, and there happens to be a man sitting in the car when they do it, too. <laughs> but it's, it's a great way, great way to lose a, you know, a protuberance right. like a stomach or something <laughs> like that, but it's, it's a little hard on But who needs that in the middle of the night? Well, this fellow was unhappy with his... <laughs> this fellow was unhappy with his automobile, I guess. I didn't ask Mr. Hoffman. <laughs> No, but the interesting part is that they, you take, the engine is taken out first, and then you burn out upholstery and all that sort of thing, so that, what else can, anything else you take out first? No, just take the engine out, transmission. Take the engine, the transmission out, burn the upholstery out, and then just feed it into the machine, and it comes out, you know, like yay, 17 or 18 feet long, and then you pile it on a truck and take it over to the scrap metal yard. It's that's Still when it goes through the better like Goldfinger. No, then they take it and, and put it in the bailer and wrap it up in, and you get it for Christmas with pink ribbons and <laughs> tissue paper around it, and everybody has a great time. Well, we beat him, Mr. Holland. Thank you very much. Nice to have you with us. Tonight. <laughs> and we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which my good friends and colleagues are, as you know, always blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Good. Mystery challenger, will you enter and sign in, please? panel, as you know, different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, we will begin with Bennett Surf. Have you been raising your voice in song in the New York area recently? Yay. Miss Francis? Have you been raising it in a musical comedy? Yes, quite. Mr. Anka? This is a female. <laughs> is that your question, Miss Yes, Anka? it is, sir. Yes, it is. Miss Kilgallen? Are you related to anyone in show business? Kind of. Mr. Sir? Would your mother be one of the greatest singers in the history of the country? Uh, well, uh, you might say that. Well, I guess we all know, don't we? Liza Minnelli? Ah! Ah, yeah. <laughs> Eliza, I'm afraid we've been tripped up by a very simple fact. New York, or Broadway, has done it again. In, what, four or five days ago, Liza was a young and talented actress and singer who was looking for a place in the sun, and then uh, Flora the Red Menace opened up, yes. and now you are a star. And I'm afraid everybody <laughs> in the panel expected that we would have the... We expected your yeah. last week, though. Did you expect your last week? <laughs> what, what did we get? Soupy sales. <laughs> <laughs> He's terrific. I love it. Oh, yes. Uh, you have lots of company. This is, he's tremendously <laughs> popular. But we're, we're also so gratified that uh, you're undergoing this. I, I don't suppose undergoing is really a good verb. This must be a remarkable and wonderful experience to oh. be a star. Oh, well, the show itself is a wonderful experience. Yeah. John, don't you think somebody ought to say something about the fact, in case of one person listening who doesn't know it, that Liza is the daughter of Judy Garland? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, right? Everybody Someone knows. Right? Come on. <laughs> in case my father is listening in, too. Vincent Vincent <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't tell me. Well, has it, has it made a big change in your life, becoming a star? Not so far. <laughs> oh, good for you. You're not going to change. But no, I don't. I don't, want to. don't suppose they give you much free time now, do they? Well, I get. You know, it's being in a show is wonderful because after a while it becomes, you know, an evening's work, and your day, your days are free. Aye. Then they let you have your days free. Well, not now, but eventually I'll get them. I hope. There's <laughs> that wistful hope, as Miss Arlene can tell you. The wistful. Well, we hope you get your days free, and we're very pleased and proud for you as. as uh, by golly, everybody in New York is. And Thanks. we just hope that this is the beginning and you go right straight up through the sky. John. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, dear. 
I don't know that you were there opening night, but it was darling to watch Miss Minnelli on the stage singing a song and looking down at Judy in the fourth or sixth row, wherever she was. <laughs> Whenever she finished the number, it was as, how was that? Okay, Mom. <laughs> that was so adorable. You both must have been shivering together. Well, I, I don't know what she was doing, but I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks very much for coming and giving us a Sunday evening, because I know you work all day. Thank you. Well, I think in balance, we have to congratulate you. It was a tough night, and you've done very well so far, panel, and we'll have another contestant after this word. And now, a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Yasui. And where are you from, Miss I Yasui? come from Tokyo, Japan. From Tokyo and Japan. It's very nice to have you with us. Miss Yus Yasui, may I present our panel? Mm -hmm. Now, would you join me over here, please? And uh, we will let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. We can tell you that Miss Yasui is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin things with Paul Anker. Salaried and a service. May I ask, do you have anything to do with the World's Fair? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Miss Yasui, do you do most of your work uh, in some place other than Tokyo? Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Yasui, do you have anything to do with food or drink? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss French. Miss Yasui, do people come to you for your services? Four down and six to go, Mr. Anker. Do you have... If I were to come to you, Miss Yasui, would you in any way hold my hand or... <laughs> you can go on dreaming, Mr. Anker. That's five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Right. Miss Yasui, do you ever work indoors? Do people ever watch you while you work? Do they pay to watch you while you work? No. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Yes, sir. Have you anything to do with television? Yes. Uh, do you do a show? Are you connected with some show that appears regularly in, in the Japanese television? Might it possibly be a Japanese version of What's My Line? <laughs> no, but by <laughs> golly, that's very good, Bennett. I'm going to throw them over because... It, it, I don't think you'd get the exact category, but Miss Yasui does a regular news program on Tokyo Broadcasting System. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Actually, in, in trying to really nail it down, a description of it would be that, that Miss Yasui is a Walter Cronkite of oh. Japan. <laughs> <laughs> she looks just like him, too. <laughs> No, she's a television news reporter, and I must say that uh, you do a great deal for the craft, and thank you very much for being part of it. It's nice to have you with us. There's an idea. And Paul Anker, it's been very nice having you with us. I must say you performed nobly because I thought you were going to have a lot more trouble tonight, really, than you've had. I'm going to take night. up skateboarding. <laughs> good night, Arlene <laughs> Fred. Good night, John, and good night, Paul. You've been to Japan, haven't you? Yes, I have. But Paul thought it was the president of the Japanese fan club that he has. <laughs> <laughs> good night, Paul. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Paul. Good night, Bennett. Good night, John. You know what eupeptic means, don't you, John? No, I have no idea. It means a very good digestion. Opposite Nobody that knows you could be eupeptic. That's yeah. a cinch. And good night, Bennett. And thanks for being with us on What's My Life.